Hi, as part of the technical support of this, uh, this in high definition uh, modulator, uh, what we're trying to do now is we're trying to overcome a problem that you might encounter if you are trying to daisy chain several modulators together, okay? Uh, and this would probably be more in the professional end usage for this, where you're in a hotel or something like that, and you're trying to create a head end of um, digital terrestrial um, signal, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate a simple usage where we have a single box, in this case an Android uh, bo uh, set-top box, running directly over to this television, okay? So the HMI signal has come out, it's been converted to digital DVB-T and sent directly over to the television. Next, what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna disconnect here, and I'm gonna show that I have a similar uh, set, set up here with this Saab satellite receiver, which is gonna output directly onto the television here, and hopefully we can look and see um, we have the output from the satellite box working, so that's fine. But if we try to loop the output from this modulator into this modulator and send it over, see what happens. Nothing. Because now both modulators, by default, are going to have the same settings and are conflicting with each other. And purely changing the channel number by itself won't be sufficient. There's a number of things we have to change. So there's two ways you can do this. You can go in here and you can manually change the settings here. But we've actually written a config file that's downloadable directly from our website that'll allow you to change that settings so it'll be different on the next box. And what we're going to do is in this video as well, I've got to demonstrate to you which config files I'm changing. Because if I was doing this in the field, particularly if I've had a number of modulators to do, I'd be writing a, uh, a config file for maybe the third, fourth and fifth box as well, just to allow you very quickly and easily to make the changes. Um, so what we have to do at this point in time is we have to come along and I'm just going to disconnect this unit here totally and take the power out. And on this USB stick, I have a very small config file. It's only a text file um, that will be just loaded directly in. So I just inserted it into the USB port. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to grab the power. I'm going to push it in. And when it powers up, as you'll see in a minute, it'll actually identify uh, the config file that's been added. I press the OK button. What it'll do now is it'll load in the config information into the modulator and then power off the box which is what it's done now. And now it's going to power back up. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to add back in the first box again, which was in conflict. So both modulators are feeding the TV now. And you see this first box is there. The second box isn't being displayed there because it's on a different uh, frequency. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to quickly come around and we have this first box on channel 43, and we have the second box here on channel 55. It's what the config file is set it to. So we just go to menu. I'll come down as far as channel. Now this is obviously specific to your television, but you get the general idea. We come down along DVB-T, and uh, you come along, and you can enter this in here as channel 43. And um, what we could do then is, um, we could set this here to channel 55. What I'm actually going to do very quickly is I'm just going to exit back out here. Um, just exit all the way out. And what I want to do is I just want to flick up the channel one before I do, or channel two before I do this. So um, this is where we have it set here, channel 55 already. I had this on, on a previous demonstration of it. So now we have set up box on for channel 43 and set talk box two on channel 55. I just had that preset on it. It's just important, I should have actually flicked the channel two on the television before tuning it in, but I had it done already from a previous setup. Now, what I want to do here, and I'm just gonna pull this here at the side, and I'm gonna briefly talk about it. I don't know if you can zoom in and see this correctly. This is what's in our config file. And what's significant here is, what I've highlighted in with a yellow highlighter is, the parts of the config file that needs to be changed. So the formatted config file is, it's just matching up to all the settings that are on the modulator. And the ones that we change is, well, we change channel 43, which is the default setting over to 55. We came down here and we changed the name of it. So we could put in, we'll say, BBC1 or RT1, whatever we wanted to have that box set to specifically, or, you know, whatever it would be, we'll say a PlayStation, something like that that's outputting there. Um, uh, the LCN on it, well, if we're going to be tuning in on channel number uh, two everywhere, on the next box, for instance, if it was a box three, four, and five, you could put the LCN number in this three, four, and five, and it will appear on the screen as such, okay? So we just hit that there. We'll see it's two, box two. So um, what we do is we just come down along then. All the following ones are left the same. 
we could change the box name as well and then the channel name and then when we're going to the video um, uh, audio PMT and service IDs we need to just have them independently there so starting off again I would we'll say with box number three here I would set it to uh, um, one zero one 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 two one three and one four okay and then there'll be no conflict in it so you can see there I would say if you had maybe eight of these in a head end and you're doing it that way what you'd of course be doing is you just go in and you could manually change them on it but very quickly you could just open notepad on your pc just change all the configure settings before you go at it and just change them all and just reprogram the config file but with that piece of information what's in the video you know you know what is already a really super product becomes even more a fantastic one in terms of what's capable of doing and it takes a lot of the mystery out of it in terms of we just did a lot of tricking and uh, talking a little bit over with the scene on this just to find out the easiest and quickest way to demonstrate it so that's it anyway how you can set up and configure uh, your Odyssean HDMI modulators to be capable of being daisy chained repeatedly to allow you to connect multiple boxes to create a head end signal.